Hey, we're on the cPanel dashboard here, and I want to go through a quick overview of the three most important areas that I use frequently. And you can get a glance at your statistics on the bottom right here. This will show you your bandwidth and your disk usage, which are your two most important numbers to monitor. And the first section here in the top left includes the file manager. You may have these sections in a different order. I think you can rearrange and drag and drop them and, and it'll just save on your account. I use the file manager if I want to get a look at the raw files on the web server. So you can click that and it'll open in a new tab. And all your web server files will be in this public HTML folder. And normally when I get set up, instead of using the cPanel file manager, I'll use an FTP program and my favorite is FileZilla. So I'm going to link up a video where I go through how to use FileZilla FTP. And it just makes it easier to drag and drop files from your computer to the web server. And just a few other examples of what you might use the file manager for. If you're not using a content management system like WordPress, you might just want to upload HTML or PHP templates that you have. If you're writing code, you can do that directly. And then if you are using WordPress, you can go into the file manager and manually delete plugins and themes if you know where they're located. Number two here is the databases section. And if you are using WordPress, which I do for probably 90% of the websites that I deal with, you want to understand that WordPress is built with PHP code and it contains one MySQL database. That's where all the data of your WordPress site is located, including your posts, all your settings and that kind of stuff and that's separated from the design so you can go into PHP my admin if you want to check out your WordPress database and just see how it's organized I would be careful if you're in there make sure you're not deleting anything or changing anything and you know one thing I think you can do is change the password if for some reason you get locked out you can manually set the password and generate it and plug it into the database and that way you're gonna be able to log into your WordPress site the other thing that you might want to do is move your WordPress site from host to host. And if you're doing that and moving it onto a cPanel hosting environment, you'll probably want to go into this MySQL databases section and you can create a new database here and a new database username and password. And that's where you can import an existing WordPress website onto a new host. So I have a video going through that process of transferring your WordPress website. I'll link that up here in the top right. And the last section here that I think is the most important is the email section. Because obviously if you're setting up a domain name with a website, you might want to have an accompanying email address with that. So the two areas that I use most frequently are this email accounts and the email forwarders. I normally like to use forwarders. And the main difference between a forwarder and an account is that with a forwarder, you get the address. So you're going to get you at yourdomain.com. And it'll just forward to an existing email provider and that email doesn't get stored on your web server. Now the downside is that you can't send as that email. To do that you have to create an email account and that means that mail is going to be stored on your server. The advantage of setting up an email account is that you can send as your email address and you can hook that into a free email service. I have a video of how to set up your custom domain email using Gmail and that's your personal account. That's a really quick intro of cPanel. I mean, there's a lot of other areas here. I guess the uh, other important mention is the software section. And this is where you can install software with Quick Install. They also have um, another installer called Soft Delicious or Soft, yeah, I guess it's Soft Delicious. I don't know how to pronounce that. But if you don't want to use WordPress, they have a bunch of other options that you can install here. There's forum software. There's other content management software like Joomla, which is probably the biggest competition to WordPress, even though WordPress completely dominates them. They also have e-commerce software, which that's also built into WordPress. If you're the type of person who likes to tinker with code, you can use the web server as a test environment and play around with these things to learn them. And if you still feel like you need a little more help, I have a bunch of tutorials to help you out. If you're looking to launch a blog, I can help you do that in 14 days it's broken down into really easy day-by-day -day steps. I tried to design this so that you don't need to spend more than 15 to 20 minutes each day. Go to 14dayblog.com or click the link here in the top right and the description below and you'll get that first day of training immediately. And if for some reason you're using WordPress as a business website or maybe you're managing somebody else's website, you can get more of a broad overview with this WordPress 101 training. To sign up for that, go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash WP101, and I'll also include links here in the top right and description.
And lastly, be sure you subscribe to my channel to get all future videos. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. Thanks for watching today. And I'll link up a couple related videos here on the end screen if you want to keep watching.